Hey folks, Mac T back, and I have a member submitted video. Ron, one of our longtime members and a very, very strong advocate of Mac T Ford Edge, uh, has a 2007 Ford Edge that has a surprise when he gets done uh, doing his uh, brake booster. That's right. At the end of the video, he tells us and evaluates what was going on. And uh, hmm, maybe that 2007 ain't the first go around on a brake booster. But either way, he went and showed us how to do it with one hand tied behind his back. That's right. Uh, he did it while holding a camera, although there were times that he had to use both hands. He did it and did it well and got the final result that he wanted. So let's go ahead and watch Ron work on his 2007 and show us, as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And that is, he did it without removing the intake. Okay, so today I'm going to do the brake booster. We're going to start by removing that bolt right there. i got to unhook the mass airflow sensor. There's a little red tab under here that you pull back, and then you can remove that. We're going to take this off. We're going to take this off, loosen this up so I can get this box out of the way here. And then I gotta get this out, I gotta get the battery out, and whatever else after that. Let me get the uh, air box, the intake, the uh, air filter thing out of the way first. Okay, battery tray is removed, battery. And back in there is the booster. Um, kinda hard to see out here, but that little gray thing is the check valve for the booster that has to come out that's connected to this hose which is then connected all the way over here to the here and the other hose is connected to this one that we've already removed from the intake and um, I don't know if that's going to come out of there without removing that throttle body at least um, I think it would squeeze out here under with all this. This all has to get pushed out of the way. But see, it's way back right there still. And um, yeah, we just got a whole lot of like this will have to be disconnected. Um, probably just right here, just right there. We'll have to disconnect that. And then. We'll have to play it by ear and see what goes. Um, the master cylinder is going to have to come off. And uh, then I'll go inside and disconnect the booster and move it around and see what goes and what else has to be disconnected. This will be a, a process. I really don't feel like taking the intake off. Um, although it's probably the easiest thing to do. Um... But, uh, we shall see. Okay, now I got the master cylinder out of the way. Um, it takes some finagling, um, but I've locked it in place over there. Um, and uh, it feels like you're bending the lines, but um, it, it, you're not really doing, it's these that are bending and they're steel they're steel braided so they're gonna feel like that um, but I've got it locked out of the way there it is um, 
I mean, it almost looks like it should just come right out over this, but I think the problem will be getting it out and past the, uh, the rod that the brake pedal pushes on um, and getting it spun around and then maybe it'll slide right out over through there. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go inside and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the booster from inside after here um, this way everything is secure it's easier to get the nuts off and stuff for uh, the master if it was flopping around it'd be a little bit harder probably to get them off so let's go inside and let's see what we got okay so now we're inside looking up there are the bolts for the master cylinder and the rod um, I've got a new switch right here the blue one those tend to break taking them out so I bought one just in case. I didn't want to have to deal with not having one should it break. I got to take out this pen right up in there, right there, and take that off. And then that'll release it from the brake pedal and bolt those and it should slide right out. Let's take a look. I'll uh, be back uh, after I get all that done. So I just got the pin out that connects the brake pedal to the booster and there's a hole in it right here as you can see. There's supposed to be a cotter pin or something in it. Um, mine didn't have one and it has never been replaced. Um, I'm wondering if the factory forgot to put one in. I guess I'll have to put one in when I put it back because you don't want this pen falling out. Okay, so I've got it out to this position um, where it's sitting. The, the inside is over here. It's what goes in the car. And this is the outside. So I've got it sitting in this position. And let's see how much effort it's going to take to get this out of here. It might just slide right out. We'll just... Um, have to mess with this one-handed, I guess. Um, this is going to be in the way, but maybe. Let me see if I can get it out with two hands. I'll be right back. Well, it took a few minutes of coaxing, but I got it out sideways like this. Um, and just kind of rotated the front. I had to clear the water line here I had to clear this right here and the brake master had to go there which I put it like that and it came out I don't have to take everything off now let's go get the new one now here I have the new one right here and the old one side by side now pushing down on this if you listen And we'll push on this one. Now clearly that one, you can hear the air as you push down on it, which means the diaphragm's got a crack in it or something inside um, to do with that diaphragm, tear, crack. Um, it's just rubber and they deteriorate over time. So we'll go put this one in in reverse order. Okay, so I'm going to show how I basically how I got it out by putting it in we're gonna it goes in real easy so I keep everything right there I'm gonna make sure these are uh, there's two different spacings I'm gonna make sure that the wide spacing is at top so that it clears the master so let's see if I can get an angle on this but I'm just gonna kind of go over here put it in right here and Try to get it around this and rotate it as it goes right in, just like that. And it's in there. So now all I gotta do, I know I'm not very good with the camera on one hand and doing this, but so now I just have to compress that, put it in the hole, and I'll be back. Okay, so it's in, and you just wanna make sure that the plug for the check valve is in the same position up there. These bolts are diagonal like this they won't go across they got to be diagonal and uh get a zip tie up here get that out 
with the camera. Well, maybe. Okay. Anyway, um, so now I can go inside and I can go ahead and tighten everything down inside and come back out here and start putting everything back on and I should be in business. Didn't have to disconnect any brake lines or anything. That right there is your ABS module. I didn't have to touch anything. Didn't have to break anything or nothing, so I don't have to worry about any bleeding of brakes. And uh, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up. Okay, everything's tightened up on the inside. And now it's put this, put the master back on there. Um, when taking it off, I noticed there was one crush nut right here. That was on the top. And then there was this one that is not a crush nut, and that was on the bottom one. So I'm going to put it back the way it was. Okay, so master cylinder's back in, check valve's back in. I've reconnected my wire here, ran it in the same place it came from, connected this back up. I took this one apart too. Ran that where it goes, got this, and this is all rerouted the same way it was when I when I got opened it up so it's going it's the same way it was I had just put everything back the way it was and this will hook up into the to the intake over here once I get all that on now it's the battery tray and um, then the battery it'll be easier to get it in before I put the air box in and everything so I'll put the battery in I'll hook up the cables for that I've uh, got my negative right here, my positive is down here out of the way, and I should be pretty much done after this. I'll be back. Okay, so everything's back in. The only thing I have left to do is put that pin in, the pedal, and to find me a cotter pin, and uh, then I will go ahead and check it out. I had to, I, when I disconnected the cables, you gotta disconnect this right here, your ground strap to the body, along with this one too. Um, and the only other thing left to hook up is my mass airflow sensor wire right here. Wait for it to click. Now, make sure the thing's open. In there and whoop it ain't on. Let's see here. It should there and now it's on. I think. Well, maybe that's not working. I don't know if the clip's working or not. Well, I have to. Ah, okay. Anyway, so I gotta hook this up. I can't do this one-handed. I gotta have both hands for this because I'm not that well doing this video with holding a phone and doing this. But I'll hook that up and then uh, put the pin in, and then we'll try it out. So yes, I am replacing the switch. As you notice, this one's longer than this one, and this one doesn't reach the the pedal to push it, so it's not even touching. Um, I imagine when you that one nice and easy this one wants to stick so I'm glad I got a new switch something you should think about when you change your booster is to go ahead and get the switch just in case okay the car is idled since the battery was disconnected I've let it idle up and hone in on its idle values um, since uh, when the battery's disconnected in most Ford vehicles, you need to start it up, let it idle for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so that the throttle body can recalibrate in to its proper value. Uh, so I've done that, and now I'm gonna check the brake pedal and see if I hear any whooshing sound, and we'll go from there. Let's see how we go. Nice. 
quiet. Goes down here. Good. So we have no more whooshing sound and our problem has been resolved and a new booster in and pedal feels real good. And uh, I'm going to take it for a spin and see how it goes. I'll be back. Okay, so all in all, it's uh, everything's good. Everything's breaking like it should. Um, this is the bottom, and that's where all the rust is happening on the bottom. But curious here. Um, now, there is no Ford sticker on this anywhere. Um, there is a, looks like a part number back here. But that is not a Ford factory part number, and so it leads me to believe that this booster had been changed before. And this is why we didn't have a cotter pin in the pin that connects the booster right here to the brake pedal. Um, the nut being different on the master cylinder. So somebody's changed this before, and they... Um, Obviously didn't do the, a good job on putting things back the way they found them with the right proper fasteners and such. Um, I'm going to say this booster probably failed because it's an aftermarket. Probably remanufactured. Um, and it's been replaced now with a Ford factory motorcraft product. Um, and... Uh, Brakes are good, they're not hard no more, and I hear no more whoosh. So that'll do it for this video. And uh, if your booster's giving you issues, you can kind of get an idea of what needs to be done. It's really not that hard. It took all of about, what, maybe hour and a half to two hours. Um, and... Um, I mean, if it takes you longer, that, that's fine. It's not a race to get this thing changed. And um, you're probably better off taking a little more time to make sure everything is done properly. Um, and, um, you know, I'm sure there's people out there that are going to be, oh, I did mine in an hour. Okay, well, that's fine, but um, it's not a race. It's not a who can get it done faster thing. I'd rather take my time take a little more time and make sure this is done right this is your life this is your breaks well I want to thank Ron for his video submission for my channel and uh, he did an excellent job in uh, showing everyone how to change a brake booster one-handed <laughs> give him applause for that oh wait there you go <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rod. And remember, like, subscribe this video. And uh, hey, let's give Ron 500 likes, folks. Tell him how good a job he did. Because it's members like you that help make this channel great. And uh, he's not the first one to have this runaround on the Mac T Ford Edge YouTube channel. And I appreciate his support. So, uh, like all things going, Ron's feet hit the floor today, and he's having a great day. And he wants you to have a great day, too. And uh, Mercy Girl's got a couple one-liners, and a band of one will always sing something for us. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production. <laughs>